Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror media. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Werewolf by Night, released on Disney Plus in 2022. Werewolf by Night is a Halloween special set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Director Michael Giacchino wanted to approach it like an episode of The Twilight Zone. It follows a group of monster hunters beset by a beast on the grounds of a gothic manor. Werewolf by Night is based on the comic character of the same name, one of many Marvel spins on classic monster tropes, alongside characters like Nakantu the living mummy, and Count Dracula himself. Appropriately, this special is also a tribute to classic movie monsters, with black and white cinematography evoking universal horror films, especially The Wolfman, which I recently covered on this show. With Marvel being the cultural juggernaut that it is, I think it's awesome that they made this special. Hopefully, it'll get more people into horror movies and black and white films. Marvel has dipped its toe into horror before, giving Sam Raimi the reins on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. That movie had awesome kills, for sure. Sure, but its constant juggling of different heroes prevented it from fully committing to the genre. While we did a commentary track for Doctor Strange 2 on the Dead Meat Patreon, I won't ever cover it on the Kill Count, mostly because it's too steeped in the MCU's expansive lore. In contrast, Werewolf by Night works as a completely standalone special, without any prior comic knowledge required to enjoy it. I know everyone searches for connectivity and we want this person in here and this event, and I was like, no, <laughs> let's, let's just do this. Now, it's pretty well known that I'm not a fan or follower of Marvel or the MCU. It's just not for me, and that's fine, and it's fine if you like it, alright? But that's why I won't cover most MCU movies. It'd be insulting to the real fans. I cover horror movies to the best of my ability in terms of research, and there is a lot of background knowledge behind Marvel movies that I just don't have the time or interest to learn. So this isn't the start of a Marvel era on dead meat or anything. This is me celebrating the fact that Marvel chose to celebrate classic horror films. I won't be able to speak on how this functions as a Marvel property, but I can tell you how I think it works as a horror flick. The known sponsorverse, with its grooming and hygiene. But what of smelling more than clean? In our modern kill count, this is where fragrances dwell, alongside the hosts who wield them in the fight against bad smell. But who will wield the most powerful weapon? Today's sponsor, Scentbird. What? No, we don't have to fight over Scentbird. Oh, you, you, you don't? No, that's what's so great about it. Scentbird is a monthly subscription service that sends you a 30-day supply of a designer fragrance each month. So we can both subscribe and try new scents. Like I've discovered I really like this Pegasus fragrance, which smells like amber, jasmine, and sandalwood. Hey, my sense of wood fragrance also smells like sandalwood. Gotta love sandalwood. I never would have known that if I had to buy the full $240 bottle at first. But now we can both subscribe and keep experimenting with new scents every month. So one day I'll find the scent of my dreams, theme park water. Oh, like on Pirates of the Caribbean? It's the best. Normally, Scentbird is $17 a month, but you can get your first month for a little over $7, that's a 55% savings, by using code DEADMEAT. Want to try my orange blossom garden? Ooh, please. Ooh, notes of orange and vanilla. Oh, you like that one? Well, you better fight over it, right? Come on, right? <laughs> no. no. Damn it! What's a narrator got to do to get a little violence in here? That said, I'm out. Huh. Guy should have stuck around, because if he wants violence, we've got it. Now let's see how many kills a werewolf can pull off under Marvel's supervision. The special begins with a universal horror spin on the classic MCU intro. An old-timey narrator takes us through the Marvel Nomicon and reveals that there be monsters in this universe, and monster hunters too. Chief among the hunters is Ulysses Bloodstone, this Simon Belmont-looking Bigfoot bumper offer. Bloodstone's weapon of choice is a magic rock of the same name, but his recent death means the rock and ruby is up for grabs. A pack of hunters has gathered at Bloodstone Manor for Ulysses' funeral. The gang's all here! Gruff Scottish guy? Charming quiet guy? Uh, David Bowie? Late to the party is Jack Russell, played by Gael Garcia Bernal, who was recently seen in M. Night Shyamalan's Old. Also here, hoping to claim her birthright stone, is Ulysses' daughter, Elsa Bloodstone. Like Larry Talbot before her, Elsa is the black sheep of her family. Her stepmother, Verusa, scolds her for her lack of Bloodstone family values. You were the greatest disappointment of his life. These monster mashers have gathered for a ceremonial hunt, and the rules are outlined by a Zoltard and weathered-looking Ulysses. I often don't like the comedy in the Marvel movies I've seen, but I do dig the dark humor of this imagined feared corpse. I'll be... Rotting 
for you. <laughs> the Clockwork Crypt Keeper explains that an unknown beastie will soon be released on the manor grounds. Whoever manages to kill it will become this group's new leader and inherit the Bloodstone. The other hunters are annoyed that Elsa gets to participate, since she forfeited her right to the stone when she ran away from home. The desperate house widow is cool with it though, since this Halloween Havoc is a battle royale. That means these battle bus riders will also be hunting each other. To the death! Elsa and Ulysses' Bloodstone are based on Marvel Comics characters of the same name. Ulysses first appeared in 1975 as an immortal monster hunter who had a fragment of the bloodstone embedded in his chest, Tony Stark style. His daughter would appear in 2001 riding on the coattails of fellow teenaged monster slayer Buffy. In this, she's aged up and played by Laura Donnelly, who was a huge fan of horror and spooky stuff. One of the most important things in my entire life is Halloween, so <laughs> it forms the deepest essence of who I am. And uh, I thought at that point it was just like, great, yeah, Marvel, okay, fine. <laughs> it's Halloween. She didn't even need to audition, since director Michael Giacchino was already a fan of her previous work, like her starring role in The Nevers. The group draws tiles to determine their starting lineup, and Lucky Jack yells, Domino, since he wins the draw. As Jack is led away, the rest of the hunters recite their Pledge of Allegiance. Stone and Creed, for those who forged our blade, blade to rid this land of its abominations. That flaming tuba player is David Silverman, an animator, producer, and director who's widely credited with creating the look of the freaking Simpsons. Silverman actually owns that tuba in real life and plays it during annual outings to Burning Man. As the tuba doof warrior plays more sounds from the Inception trailer, Jack enters the hunting grounds, this concrete paintball arena that would make Jareth proud. The other participants soon follow, no doubt eager to kill each other, but when Jack runs into Elsa, he suggests they pass each other by. Unfortunately, scary Scotsman Jovan has other plans. He tries to land a hatchet blow before the two can bury it. Jovan is played by Kirk R. Hatcher, who's worked as a writer and director on several Muppets projects. He also had a cameo in Spider-Man Homecoming, apparently reprising a role he had in Star Trek IV. Despite some head trauma, Elsa manages to disarm Jovan and escape with his axe. She's not safe for long though, since she's soon attacked by someone with an awesome wrist-mounted nerf shooter thing! Oh, and it's gone. Holy shit, she hacked that hand off! This tombstone raider is fellow hunter Leorn, who's a fast and furious fighter despite the missing limb. He lands a blow with Jovan's axe, but it's not a perfect score, so Elsa quickly rocks his Westworld with a bolt to the jaw. She hides from an approaching Jovan, who fails to notice the duo before Leorn dies from his injuries. This concrete guard Garden was created by production designer Maya Shimaguchi, who previously worked on Marvel's Hawkeye series. She also created the rotunda the hunters met in earlier, which is filled with easter eggs, like a mural of a comic accurate Gore the God Butcher, and mounted references to werewolf by night villains Krog and Glitter Knight. Thank God I have writers to help me out with this stuff now. You're doing a bang up job there, Tim and Jeremy. Elsewhere, Jack is still tracking down the mystery monster when he gets a jump scare from the bushes. But Jack's not afraid, since this beastie turns out to be his friend, the Man-Thing, previously seen in the MCU as a statue in Thor Ragnarok. In the comics, Man-Thing is a former biochemist named Theodore Salas, who was fused with the Florida Everglades during a botched super soldier experiment? Sure, okay. Man-Thing originally appeared in the first and only only issue of Marvel's Savage Tales, based on a pitch by Stan Lee and a story by comic writers Roy Thomas and Jerry Conway. A second story was written by Conway's then-roommate Len Wein, the man who would go on to create DC's Swamp Thing. According to Thomas, the similarities did not go unnoticed by Marvel, but the characters were ultimately different enough that the company didn't pursue legal action. Man-Thing is hot and bothered by the Bloodstone, which has been stuck to his back as part of the hunt. Jack intends on breaking his buddy out with an explosive, but is forced to flee when he's chased by fellow hunter Azarel. He escapes the towering Tigris and takes refuge inside a mausoleum, where Elsa is trying to patch up her leg wound. Jack gains her trust with the tying of a tourniquet, and the two bond over their family drama. All families have something in common. They follow us. For good, for bad, they... They stay like they become an atmosphere. In return for the Bloodstone, Elsa agrees to help Jack eat to Man-Thing Tambien. She directs him to a large crack on one of the arena's walls, and he tells her the monster's name. Ted. He's called Ted. 
Ted. Oh, so Ted is both the doctor and the monster. Got it. Jack accidentally starts the countdown on his explosive, sending the two running in opposite directions. Elsa comes across Jovan, and the two have a brief standoff that's quickly interrupted by Ted. Ted burns up Jovan's head with a crispy grip. Now that's one smoking Scotsman. <laughs> this power comes straight from Man-Thing's comic tagline. Whatever knows fear burns at the touch of the Man-Thing. Elsa's definitely feeling some fear right now, but she befriends the monster with some flattery. Ted? You have a lovely name. And such beautiful Rick and Morty style eyes. Man-Thing was portrayed on set by the film's makeup supervisor, Carrie Jones, with additional vocalizations done by the film's editor, Jeffrey Ford. He was created with a combination of CGI, animatronics, and a practical suit worn by Jones. I fucking love Man-Thing, and his suit made by a team at K&B FX, who also created the mounted monster head seen earlier. The suit looks incredible and has an animatronic head and hands, controlled by people with joysticks just like you love to see. Elsa leads Ted towards Jack, who's currently trying to detonate a path to freedom. It takes him a couple of tries, but he succeeds just as his friends arrive. Ted runs out into the night, but not before Elsa manages to hook herself a bloodstone. Looks like a happy ending for our heroes. That is, until Jack tries to pass Elsa the stone. It knocks him back and fucks him right up. The other hunters soon arrive, and Verusa deduces what Jack really is. A monster masquerading as one of our own. She taunts the fallen Jack. I can't wait to find out what breed of evil you are. And the pair are knocked out with some cattle prods by Verusa's henchmen. Oof, that's got a cigarette burn. Jack wakes up from his science of sleep studies inside a big birdcage with Elsa. If his canine name or mannerisms didn't give it away, Jack Russell is the titular werewolf by night, cursed to transform every full moon. Jack's got a pretty good handle on it though. He locks himself away to avoid hurting innocents and keeps careful track of moon phases in his lunar cycle diaries. The next full moon is in five days. We have plenty of time to figure something out. But Elsa reveals the Bloodstone has the power to expedite his transformation, and Jack realizes Verusa wants one more wall mount and one less stepdaughter. Now that's killing two birds with one Bloodstone. Jack gives Elsa instructions on how to survive him in his werewolf form. Do not break eye contact no matter what. He also commits her scent to memory, Trace a ooh la la. He begs Verusa for mercy, but judging by that runny mascara, she is officially off the rails. You wanna see this? Yes, darling. Harriet Sansom is having a fucking ball in this role. Verusa starts up some Latin encanting, and the resulting rock magic signals our flashing light warning chime and casts the room in Frankenstein lightning. We see Jack's transformation in shadows, cast behind a close up of Elsa's unwavering eye contact. This shot was one of the first ideas Giacchino had, since he figured an off screen transformation would be more effective at this point. There have been a lot of werewolf movies made. We've seen them transform so many different ways. We're never going to do it better better than the best of them. The effect was done practically, with the transformation of projection being played on the back wall. The only CG is the bars of the cage, since real ones would have cast unwanted shadows. The scene is accompanied by the movie's wonderfully gothic score, composed by director Giacchino pulling double duty John Carpenter style. This is only Giacchino's third directorial effort, but he scored countless well-known projects, including the Gael Garcia Bernal starring Coco, and my personal reference point for him, Lost. Life and death always moves me to tears. With the transformation complete, Verusa tries to get a better look, only to get her arm pulled into the cage. The guards tase the werewolf into submission until the place smells like a testing facility for Nair. In the chaos, Jack breaks out, sending the hunters into high alert. He eventually reveals himself, leaping onto one guard and killing another by breaking his neck. Electrical flashes give us a glimpse of Jack's final werewolf form. Giacchino wanted to see Bernal's face, so they took a cue from Jack Pierce's designs for Werewolf of London and the Wolfman. Another cue they took was keeping the suit completely practical, consisting of a separate mask and suit that initially took four hours to apply. Major props to costume designer Maya C. Rubio. Jack takes out a couple more guards, and judging by the total number of guards and bodies we see, I'll count two more as dead right now, I think. A hunter named Barrasso manages to knock him off balance, so Jack Vincent Van goes for his ear as revenge. While Elsa and Jack are both based on comic characters, the other hunters are original characters, likely so they could take some 
gnarlier abuse. I don't even think their names are ever said in the special. Barrasso bounces back and grabs a sword, but Elsa climbs out of her cage and intercepts him, tripping him onto her blade and slitting his throat. God damn! Meanwhile, Jack is fending for himself just fine. He tosses a guard into an awesome one-take fight scene as the main entrance is sealed off, taking away most of the light. I'll count these final five guards as killed here, since they're all ravaged by Jack. The last three are killed in a way that get their blood and guts splattered onto the camera lens. Who's gonna clean that glass, Jackie boy? Elsa is approached by Azarel, who tries to get medieval on her ass with a morning star. Horror fans might recognize Eugenia Bondurant as the occultist in The Conjuring 3. Azarel has no fears of pain, so the two ladies duke it out. When Azarel tries to use Elsa's weapon, she outlands a hit on the lady in white, then slits her throat and plants that sword in her stone! Hell yeah! Giacchino shot this special, gunning for a mature rating, but ended up with a TV-14 despite all the blood, likely due to it being in black and white, the same trick WWE uses on YouTube. As I've said before, I think it's important to have good horror for younger audiences. It's like a gateway drug to the more intense stuff, and also might lead them to this channel. With her guards dead, Verusa steps up with a bloodstone in tow and uses it to knock Jack back repeatedly. She gets him pinned against the wall, but Elsa intervenes and knocks her out. She approaches Jack and he pounces, causing her to take the fall. Elsa tries to appeal to his inner humanity, and since this is still a Disney production, it actually works. He gallops away and out of this station at the 11th hour. Now all Elsa has to deal with is one wicked stepmother. Elsa! You let him go! Verusa can't hold it back anymore and tries to shoot Elsa, but she's interrupted by Jack's thunder buddy Ted. The man thing incinerates Verusa with his flesh melting mittens, then reunites her body with her husband's. Holy shit. I love his little nonchalant shrug afterwards. Elsa points Ted in the direction of his friend, then settles into her new estate, the only survivor of the Bloodstone bloodline. That is, until they retcon her brother into the mix. Judy Garland's rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow adds some color back into this monochromatic Kansas. This symbolizes leaving the black and white world of Elsa's father and entering a new one where monsters and men aren't so cut and dry. Case in point, Ted and Jack, who wakes up with a Halloween hangover. Damn, I did not expect Ted to look this good in full color. Amazing! Ted gives Jack some morning Joe and confirms that Elsa survived the night's events. They make dinner plans for sushi and the special ends by telling you it's the end. How many people got blown out of the MCU canon? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Oh, I'm Jack Attack! Oh, MC Go! I counted 13 kills in Werewolf by Night, with 9 male victims and 4 female. Good thing Elsa restored color, or this pie chart would be hard to read. As far as killers go, Ted the Man Thing toasted up two victims, Elsa sliced her way through three, and Jack Russell wolferized the remaining eight, who were all guards. With a runtime of 53 minutes, that left us with a kill on average just over every four minutes. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Verusa. It's a perfectly over the top send off to a perfectly over the top villain. Dol Machete for lamest kill will go to the rando guards, who I guess got killed when Jack was batting them around. Around. And that's it! Werewolf by Night came out earlier this month, and I'd be down with seeing more horror in the MCU. I hope you all have a happy Halloween, and until next time, I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching this first ever Marvel movie kill count! And thanks again to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Again, use code DEADMEAT for 55% off your first month. Seriously, get that sense of wood fragrance. I love sandalwood! Broke a good kill count streak I had going by forgetting my wedding ring today. God. Damn it! If you like this awesome shirt I'm wearing, that's available for purchase right now at deadmeatstore.com. It's available in this color, black, and on the cover of a notebook. I love this design a lot because it's got Lucy right there on my belly button. <laughs> I want to thank all of you, every single one of you who's watching this video right now. Whether you've been subscribed for years or this is your first video on the channel, I thank you for taking the time to watch it. I know that originally I said that this Sunday we'd publish the intro to that movie we're trying to make pregame, but post-production's taking a wee bit longer longer than expected, so that'll actually be out a week from today, Friday, November 4th. Thanks everyone. Be good people.